Welcome to episode nine of Projects of the People. This is where we dedicate our channel to you, the viewers, and let you show us and showcase what thing or things you've got in your garage, what you've got on the driveway, what do you drive and own, and why do you love it so much? It's also the bit where I get to sit in a lonely lay-by in my car and introduce these wonderful clips. <laughs> I'm Johnny Smith, welcome to The Late Break Show. Let's start with this cool little video from father and son, Adrian and Jamie, up in Aberdeenshire, Scotland. Uh, they're both smiling all the time, but yet all their cars seem to be broken. Hi Johnny, I'm Adrian, this is Jamie, and this is our Projects of the People. So this is our Tiger Avon. It's got a 16 valve Toyota 4 AGE engine in it with twin Gen V throttle bodies and a Type 9 Ford gearbox. It should have a Ford Pinto, but I bought a Mark 1 MR2 off somebody at work and decided to put that engine in instead. So the exhaust should actually come out on the other side. So it's confusing to people that the exhaust comes out the passenger side. Um, I built this 14 years ago, it took four years to build and it's broken. It's knocking from the engine. Hang on a minute, Adrian wrote in the email to me that the Tiger project was started during his paternity leave when Jamie was born 14 years ago. Who has the time to build a car when you've become a parent for the first time? Nobody. Next project is the 1956 Standard 10 Super. It's got a Dolomite 1500 engine in it, which is different from the 849cc engine that should have in it. Um, it's like a rat rod. It's got period correct mag wheels, stainless side exit exhaust, and it's also broken. It needs a new cylinder head gasket. There's the Dolomite 1500cc engine. Last in the fleet, the third car, is our 2012 Abarth 500. It's also broken, except this one is just the battery's flat. So we're actually fixing that just now. It's on charge, ready to go. Here's the spare engine for the Tiger. It's getting rebuilt. It's on the heads here. Me doing that. Valves are all out. Um, ready to go back in once it's built. <laughs> so that's us, Johnny. Projects of our people. It's our three projects. Hot rod behind us. Our Barth and the Tiger. All completely different cars. All great fun to drive. Thank you for the show. Speak to you later. Bye. Right, these next three clips feature a pair of gorgeous Golfs, one Subaru and Prezza, and a Citroen C4 Cactus that's been tastefully dropped on the deck. The latter is the daily driver of a guy called Phil, who's had a stunning little Honda Acti custom pickup truck that we did feature in a previous project of the people, which I'll put the link to up above. Um, but yeah, have a look at these. Hi, I'm Fresh and Minty. And this is my 2016 Citroen Cactus in Blue Lagoon paintwork. It's got a PureTech 3 cylinder 1.2 litre 108 brake horsepower engine and gives a nice balance of performance and economy for a daily driver car. The Cactus first caught my eye when I saw them in this colour on the roads but at the time the price wasn't really a viable option and also I wanted to wait until coilovers were available for them. Once I found coilovers I narrowed my search down to a Cactus with this engine in this colour with a zero raised road tax and found this car which had a low mileage of 20,000 in good condition and also has a nice leather interior with a style that echoes the Citroen BX in my eyes. I ordered the coilovers as soon as I bought the car in December 2020 and fitted them before I'd really driven the car thanks to the Covid lockdown 3 at the start of 2021. The drop is around 80mm but have maintained the comfort level by downsizing wheels from 16 inch to 14 inch diameter so the chunky tyre sidewalls help absorb impacts from bumps and potholes. I already had the Lotus Eclat wheels stashed in my garden waiting until I owned a car suitable for them to be fitted to. They weren't 100% suitable though so I had to get adapters fabricated as the Cactus is 4x108 PCD and the wheels are 4x114 PCD. 
As well as loaves and wheels, I've also had the standard arches and skirts colour coded and purchased official Citroen front and rear bumper trims, which I've had colour coded too. Although purchases are daily, I can never resist making a few changes to a car to style it closer to my tastes, and this year it has come in handy as a backup show car when my main show car, a 1985 Honda Acti, has been off the road. Thanks for watching. Hi, the Let Brake Show. My name's Callum, and these are my cars. The blue one is a Mark II Golf 1.3 fully deceased spec survivor car, and the black one is a 2006 Mark V R32. So the Mark II is a totally original car, it's got no modifications, it's done 24,000 miles and it's been garaged its entire life. I bought it last year off my friend and he bought it off the original owner's family in a house clearance. The plan with the car at the moment is just to keep it standard, just look after it, take it to some shows and it also went to my wedding in 2019. Just love the granddad spec interior on this car, it's so 80s. 24,000 miles, no rev counter, just a clock. The car came with loads of paperwork, whole ring binder full of it, including the original bill of sale, a pre-delivery inspection sheet from Volkswagen, and a brochure with handwritten lists of optional extras written by the original owner, including the GTI style grille. And while filming this today, I managed to find the original factory build sheet from Volkswagen that had been living under the rear seat squab for all these years. So the R32, I've had it since 2017. Uh, it's got a few modifications, nothing too crazy. My favourite being the Evo 10 BBS wheels, which are finished off in Volkswagen sand, which was a Mark 1 Golf colour. And of course, it's got that iconic exhaust note. <laughs> Hi, my name's Sam Palmer. This is my 2004 Subaru Impreza STI. It's a UK model. Um, bought it April this year. Uh, it's my evening weekend and track car. Me and the wife quite enjoyed doing track days together. My last track car was actually an Impreza wagon. Um, this is my third Impreza. Um, had lots of cars over the years, all sorts of things, from a 1960 Series 2 Land Rover through to a BMW M4. Always find myself coming back to the sort of rally homologation type cars. I've had two GT4s in the past, Celicas as well. Um, we moved house about a year ago and finally got a house that had a garage. So I always said uh, I'd try and find a nice Impreza STI this, this model year and in the black which has like a really nice gold fleck in it which you may or not may not be able to see um she's not a showroom queen she is well used um the rear arches are a common place of rotting out on these they're pretty solid at the moment there's no issues but the one of the plans this winter is to actually strip out all the rear end and uh pre-push and protect and powder coat subframes and stuff um Got a nice Miltec exhaust and get the box of rumble. Uh, inside's pretty standard. Just got a couple of gauges, wide band, air fuel ratio gauge, oil temp, oil pressure. So we've got six speed in the box. Uh, we also got some big jobs to do this winter. So cam belt and water pump need doing. And uh, got all new brake discs and uprated pads and hoses and new brake fluid to do all around. So that'll keep me out of trouble for a bit. And then the plan next winter will probably be strip all the front end and do similar to what we are planning to do on the back end this winter. So it's a good fun car. The lockdowns caused many of us to either revisit a car in need or to go out and buy something that did need a bit of a tinker and maybe teach yourself some skills or bring something back from the brink. These next three cars owned by Sasha, Craig and Noel are exactly that. Hi everyone, my name's Craig and I just wanted to introduce you to my project car. It's a 1983 Honda Civic S, 1.3 litre engine, twin carburettors. I've owned the car since 2008 and it used to be my daily driver for a couple of years. Um, but then unfortunately the head gasket blew on it 
and I didn't really have the skills or the time to um, repair it. But I didn't want to get rid of it. I knew I wanted to keep it because I really liked the 80s style. Uh, and I loved driving it, so I kept hold of it. Uh, the car, unfortunately, had to um, be kept outside for a number of years. And here you'll see what it looked like when I had it moved to my garage in 2017. More recently, with lockdown, I revisited it as a project. I did a bit of research, found a lot of videos on YouTube about um, stripping the engine down. Uh, recently, I've had the fuel tank uh, coated um, as there were a few leaks on it and uh, couldn't get that repaired. So that's been coated and it's ready to go back on the car. The car's in relatively good condition, all things considered. Um, the inside's particularly well looked after. I do have the intention of repainting the car at some point in the future um, but that's going to be well down the line um, there's a lot of rust that I'll need to address first probably some welding to do and um, probably a lot more parts that I'm going to need to source before I'm able to get anywhere close to it being uh, resprayed. For the moment I am just uh, looking to get the engine running and make sure that's all working fine um, I'm not looking for it to be uh, showroom condition or anything like that. Um, I just like to get it back up and running really uh, and be able to take it to the odd show and drive it around. If I had any sort of goal in mind, it would be to get it fully restored back on the road uh, for its 40th birthday, which is in September 2023. Anyway, that's about it from me. Thanks for listening. Hi, Johnny. Hi, The Late Break Show. Welcome to my 2001 Fiat Barquetta. Those of you who know about these cars will know that not only does it have one of the coolest door handles ever fitted to a car, they were only available in left-hand drive, as you can see. This model in particular is quite an interesting one in my opinion because it's a Riviera edition, which means that it has this lovely quilted leather interior along with quilted door cards, and it, I think it really complements the red very nicely. Um, being a 20 year old Italian red car, naturally it does have some fade and some lack appeal. This actually comes with the detachable hard top, which is quite rare on these cars to find. Um, the worst offender for paintwork issues is, uh, is this door mirror here, which is, would be on the driver's side if it was a right hand drive car, of course, but passenger in this case. So that's going to be the next job. I've only had the car a couple of months, but in that time, I've repolished this headlight because that was quite uh, quite murky and quite cloudy. We've just also fitted some, I don't know how well you'll be able to see, some new discs and pads all round. Um, and I've also undersealed the underneath of the car as well to protect it um, against the horrid UK weather. Can I just interject a minute, Sasha? Eh? I hope those discs and pads came from ABC Brakes because they're a sponsor of one of our playlists. Two, I really like your tool board on the wall. And C, I'm very pleased that someone spent some time protecting the underneath of a car because that is an area grossly overlooked by so many people. Uh, next jobs, I think, is going to definitely be addressing that lacquer pill on the roof. Um, but before that, the headlining on the hardtop is quite saggy. And there's a couple of jobs to do under the bonnet with new power steering lines. But other than that, it should be ready for some spring and uh, summer action. So uh, thank you for listening and uh, see you soon. Hello, Johnny. Hello, Late Break team. So I've submitted uh, rather cheekily a second Projects for the People video. This time, however, it's a proper project. This is my 1989 Volkswagen Transporter, T3, Type 25, whatever you wish to call it. Um, it was purchased six months ago from my brother who lost interest in it. Um, it's partially converted inside, which we've ripped out and started again. It's got a 1.9 petrol engine, not the best, but it'll do until we decide to swap it out. It's in proper 80s colours. I believe it's Dirty Shirt over Nappy Brown, however that might not be the official uh, title. It's been many, many colours as you can see. There's a dark blue colour there, there's a little bit of blue there, there's a little bit of rust there. And of course the uh, Tribal Tattoo which uh, will be going. Inside, um, it's basically a mess. Um, what we've done, or what we've done so far, I put that side window in, I put an air vent in, 
I've put some solar paneling in as well. Let's just get inside because it's raining. In the back here, it's going to be a two berth camper van with a rock and roll bed. That window was already in. In the front here, lovely soft Saab seats and sort of stuff that I don't really want and can't be bothered with and things like that that I'll probably throw out. Oh, what's that doing there? But it's a very, very usable car. We're very, very excited to look to start using this. Uh, as you can see, still very much in the embryonic stages. There'll be a cooker and a sink over there. Just use your imagination. Nice soft squashy bed, side cabinets, some lighting on the top there. Lots of lots of insulation. So yeah, so there we go. That is it. That is my project for the people. I'll just give you one last look at that. Okay, to finish this episode of Projects of the People, have a look at this car owned by a guy called Stuart Chisnell. I actually knew about this car a very long time ago, it seems. Hi all at the Late Break Show. My name's Stuart and this is my VW Beetle. I bought this Beetle in 1990 as a standard ruby red VW 1500. After driving it round for 12 months it was wheeled into my parents garage and then five years later turned into this. A little bit modified. As you can see we've got sculptured seats, smooth dash, all the trim removed suicide doors little local club emblem sandblasting Nice bit of rear scripting. Again, all smoothed off. Number plate lowered down. Uh, slightly tuned 1641 engine, twin carbs. Colour coded a little bit. Like I say, this car came back on the road in 1997. It's been on the road ever since. Doesn't do a great deal of miles anymore. But still MOT'd every year. Also as well, you may remember this Johnny, it was once featured in the magazine that yourselves and Paul published. You came down to Telford, yourself and Paul, to the fun loving flat fours meet and did a little photo shoot of it for me. Okay, and there you go, my beetle. Thank you ever so much to everybody who has supported this playlist of projects of the people that was, like I said, born out of lockdown and not being able to really move around much and maybe resorting to hiding in your shed or lean-to or garage and having a bit of a tinker with a project vehicle. Um, thanks to everyone that's entered this particular one. Um, if you've watched previous ones and you subscribe to The Late Break Show, thank you. If you don't subscribe, why not subscribe? And if you're a supporter of this channel via Patreon, thank you ever so much. If you want to know more about Patreon, I will put a link in the description below. Thank you.